Welcome to Cut Off Jeans, the podcast that helps you find your truth using nothing but DNA. I'm Julie Dixon Jackson, and I'm a genetic genealogist, henceforth known as a Gen Genie. I am Richard Castle, the producer and co pilot. Yay! Welcome to your flight. <laughs> <laughs> we are about to enter cruising altitude. <laughs> I was going to do the uh, the roller coaster thing about keeping all limbs inside the thing, but that, it's <laughs> that, that they don't do that on airplanes. It was the wrong reference, Not anymore. wasn't it? Not anymore, <laughs> Not anymore. Wal- Waldo Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you said that. <laughs> all right, uh, World War One flying ace. You know what? We should do, we should have a separate side podcast just about movies that we saw when we were a kid from right, the 70s. <laughs> right? That was, it was uh, Robert Redford, right? Yes, yeah. the great Waldo Pepper. Yeah, my I dad took me to see it. <laughs> In the movie theaters. <laughs> oh, Lord, we are so um, lame. And we didn't even know each other then, Julie, right? No. This is before we even met, so yes. We're really the same person. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> we are like the yin and yang, except we're, I think we're both yang. <laughs> we're yang and yang. Yang and yang. <laughs> were those those Siamese twins that were, no. That no. Was <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, let's get into it. I have a fun story from the news this week. We know I love a royal scandal. Oh, yeah. Well, who doesn't, Who doesn't love a royal scandal? Uh, This is interesting. So Belgium's ex-King Albert was ordered to take a DNA test in a paternity row. Oh, whoa. Okay. Who knew? So in Brussels, Belgium's former King Albert II must undergo a DNA test in the next three months to establish whether artist Delphine Boel is his daughter... A court has ruled, according to the Belgian news agency. Boel, 50, who has has been fighting to be recognized as Albert's daughter since 2013, claiming that her mother, Baroness Sibylle de Sely Longchamp. Oh, see, I would have said Sybil Longchamp. (laughs) Longchamps. Longchamps. Yes, she has Longchamps. I know there'll be some French speakers correcting I, yeah. I give you uh, okay props for, uh-huh. for even trying to pronounce it correctly. So you Thank did a you. great job, Julie. You know, I think my pronunciation is good because uh, when I was in Paris, I just knew a few phrases, and every time I would use them, they would just start speaking French oh. to me as if I knew what I was talking yeah. about. But those French do that anyway just to piss you off because <laughs> they know that you can't speak English. I mean, you can't speak French. You're right. <laughs> You're so right. I was standing. Okay, I was in... <laughs> I was uh, at a museum, like standing in line. This was in the Netherlands. And I mean, I wasn't saying a word. I did not have anything on my clothing that said I was American. Mm -hmm. I was by myself. And there was like a line guide going down, talking to different people and speaking in Dutch. And they spoke to me and said, in English, you know, are you here for this exhibit? And I looked at them and said, how did you know that I speak English? They just said, you look like an American. I said, oh. Interesting. I, thank you. I bet it was your shoes. <laughs> I have, I, to this day, I have no idea. It wasn't like I was wearing some kind of anything in English on my shirt or, you know, it was like a polo. It was you your know? shoes. Maybe. I bet you were wearing tennis shoes. Were you wearing tennis shoes? Probably. Yeah. yeah. Americans wear tennis shoes in Europe. Europeans don't. Oh, so now my mystery is solved. <laughs> However, the mystery of Longchamp, Longchamp. is not solved. It's or is not. it? No, it's not. Okay. Uh, so going back, so Baroness Sybil Longchamp had a lengthy affair with Albert decades ago. Oh. Lengthy. Okay. Like 10 years. That is a lengthy affair. That's pretty lengthy. Yeah, that's almost like commonwealth, common law marriage. <laughs> commonwealth marriage. <laughs> commonwealth, if it was in Massachusetts. No, um, no if it, common law, I meant. Yes. yes. So according to Belga, the Brussels Appeals Court established on October 25th that Jacques Boel, the ex-husband of Delphine's mother, was not her legal or biological father. Decision was made public on Monday. Um, a DNA test in 2013 established that he was not the artist's biological father. A lower court ruled last year, however, that the paternity suit had no legal basis as there were other criteria for family ties than biology. Interesting. Hmm. I agree with that. Um, Albert II, who abdicated in 2013 after a 20-year reign, has always denied being Delphine Bowell's father, but he has admitted that his marriage to Paola, 81, had been rocky through periods. Or through rocky periods. <laughs> it's always rocky through periods. Yeah, I'm not even going to touch that <laughs> okay, one. Okay. All right. Um, so let's, let's unpack this, shall we? Yeah, please. What do you think she wants? Well, I mean, uh, I hate to go there, but I mean, if you say that you're related to the king, Mm -hmm. you know, what do you want? You either want power or you want money. I don't, it's going to make her look really bad if she wants money. 
Right. I but, mean, but how bad do you have to look if you get the money? You're like, oh well, you well know, I can afford thing. to look bad. Here's the thing, though. <laughs> I was, uh, I mean, as, and this happens. We've talked about this before when adoptees find their biological families and contact them. Sometimes the families are freaked out because they think they want money. Right, right. And they can't get that money, right. even if they are biologically related to exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah. It's not, they were illegally adopted by somebody else. Right. And they just can't. Right. So I, I, I think the only thing she could really get is bragging rights. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems, I feel like maybe I'm being unfair because th- this girl would have just as much right as any um, adoptee mm, to, mm. to know who her parents are and to find out the truth. Right. So j- it's only because of his position and wealth or former position and Precisely. wealth that, that I'm going there. And I wouldn't say that if he was some kind of like, you know, trashy laborer. You're absolutely <laughs> right. You're absolutely right. And let's look at it that way. That she she's just somebody who has an NPE. She found out her father was not her father in 2013. She's right. like, well, who is my father? And mom's like, yeah, by the way, remember the king? <laughs> yeah, I had this 10-year affair with him. And so So yeah. in looking at it that way, I've done I've done a U-turn. Have you? Yes, I have, because immediately I'm like, why, what what does she want? This is yeah. dirty. But you know what? She's just somebody who wants to know who her father was. Right. Well, it could be. I mean, I who knows. Who knows the truth? Well, you know? I hope I hope we get uh, I hope we get answers. I hope yeah. we all get answers, and I hope she gets the answers. Yeah, yeah. What's her name? Delphine. I Delphine. hope Delphine Boel gets her. <laughs> <laughs> you have to talk like these. I know, right? It's offensive. I bet. What? What, what you, I just what, did. What you just yeah, did. What no, I'm doing. I, I don't find it offensive. Okay. But then again, I'm not Belgian. <laughs> <laughs> Neither am I. Obviously. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about this trend in um, law enforcement. Oh, in, interesting. In some states. Okay. So it's called the John Doe slash DNA warrants. That's sexist. Why not Jane Doe? Or just Doe. A deer, a female deer. <laughs> uh-huh. All right, so an anonymous person had mailed two threatening and racially tinged letters to Dane County Circuit Court Judge Juan Colas, the Wisconsin County's first Hispanic judge. Um, after one of the most controversial decisions of his career. This is in 2012. And so they, they looked for years to try to figure out who this guy was. The first threat on the judge's life came enclosed with a Los Angeles Times newspaper clipping that detailed murders of two Mexican politicians, oh dear. Uh, suggesting Colas may be the next. The second one came with an advertisement for dentures suggesting Colas may be losing his teeth soon, or perhaps worse. Oh, dear. Nice. Um, so... The sender was never caught, but he did put a nine cent stamp on one of the envelopes he mailed. How stupid. <laughs> nine cents, that's not going to get you anywhere. And by the way, the last time a nine cent stamp was actually made was 1975. Oh my God. So he's a, you. Um, wow, that's and, an and old and stamp. And obviously, those are stamps that you licked. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, of course. So, remember that, people? Are you all remember. old enough to remember licking stamps and not just picking them off the... Or Do you know what stamps are? Because Minty. You, there's this thing called the U.S. Post now. I know everyone emails. USPS. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so forensic analysts took the spit uh, left on the back of the stamp and ran it through the lab to obtain a DNA profile. Oh, my God. Which, as it happened, matched the DNA found on anonymous threatening letters mailed to three other public officials in Wisconsin. Wow. Mm-hmm. So in October 8th, I guess of this year, the night before the statute of limitations would, uh, would have run out, the Wisconsin Department of Justice filed felony charges in a case now known as State of Wisconsin versus John Doe, Unknown male with matching DNA profile at genetic locations and then it lists the genetic locations. Wait, so they don't have the guy? Nope, but they have his DNA profile, which is uniquely him. So by filing charges against his profile... Then the statute of limitations oh, doesn't run out. Wow. That's, or hasn't run out. I, that's so interesting. I never heard of that. Mm-hmm. That must be something new, right? Um, well, they're doing it state by state. In some states, you can't do it. Uh, obviously, in Wisconsin, you can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, let me see. Uh, your complainant believes that the sender of the envelope and therefore the sender of the threats is the person matching the above DNA profile. So if they, when they catch this guy, mm-hmm. there will... They'll take another DNA test. And match it. Or what they're probably going to... What I mean, I wonder if they've contacted Parabon yet. 
the idea is that even though they don't have his name and they don't have him in right. in, in custody, right. they can make a charge so that the limitations... Because that person is identified as right. him, him by his unique DNA profile. Oh, that's so... Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. Yep. It's called a John Doe warrant, uh, or in this case, a DNA profile indictment. It originated, it originated in the late 90s as a way to file charges against unidentified rapists before it became too late, leaving rape victims without any prospect of justice. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, And they're just absolutely. updating it with the DNA stuff. So mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Wow. DNA is magic. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I thought that was really interesting. Wow. It, it tell you, there, it reminds me. I just watched that movie. It's an old movie, but Minority Report, where they they catch people before they have uh, they've committed a crime, but then they put them in jail because they know that they were going to do it. Have you ever seen that? With yeah, Tom I love that movie, yeah. but I forgot that's what it was about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not so much about DNA, you know, or anything like that. Yeah. But it's still, it's it's kind of fascinating how the technological changes allows law enforcement and mm-hmm. gives them different tools. You yep. know, you just wonder. Where are they going to take it next? I know. Mm, I know. Interesting. It's so interesting. You just can't get away with anything nowadays. <laughs> you lick a stamp and your whole history is out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, I think it's time for a break. What do you think? I'm going to go check for, uh, on this break, I'm going to check, make sure I don't have any nine cent stamps in my... <laughs> you totally should, especially if you've committed murder or threatened a judge. I haven't, but all my stamps have like, you know, Disney villains on them. So. Of course they do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's take a break. All right. If you're enjoying Cut Off Jeans, please subscribe, rate, and review. Now, back to Julie and me. Okay, we're back. Yay. I have something that I think it's important we talk about. Uh-oh. She just got very <laughs> serious. I got a little worried now. Okay, what is it? This is as serious as I'll ever get. Okay, I have a picture that I would like you to look at. Okay. And just give me your impressions of it when you look at it. Okay, I see a picture <clears throat> of, of two women who look like they could be related. Um, I don't know who they are. <laughs> But they both have, you know, brown, dark brown hair. They have, looks to me like their eyes and their um, nose and their smile are very similar. Okay. That's all I know. All right. Yeah. That's all you need to know. So um, a lot of you guys have noticed that once I find a parent, a biological parent, I will do a split screen, a side-by-side shot yes. of the the child and the parent. Yes. And I'll try to get it like on a similar angle to show how similar they are. And, um, and it's fun to do. And people always say, wow. So this case that I'm working on right now, uh, it's this huge family and I've been whittling away at it. And, uh, I know the, the person that I'm helping was, born in one state that is two states away from this where this entire family lives, and okay. we don't know if it's the paternal or maternal side. Uh-huh. Um, but I got down to this one branch of the family or one of these siblings, and they happened to be in living in the same town that the adoptee was born. Okay. Even though they were from the other state, they lived there at that time. Um, and this woman was one of their daughters, and she was the exact right age in exactly the right place. Okay. And I found this picture, and I almost lost my mind. <laughs> so I immediately did a split screen. Okay. And I sat and I looked at it for a while, and I was... And normally I don't do this because you shouldn't... I mean, I just, I don't want to get anybody's hopes up. And you can't go on looks alone. You need to have the DNA. You absolutely cannot, which is the point of this whole, of this whole segment. Because we all have doppelgangers. We talked about that. Right. And I have a cousin, I have a first cousin that looks more like me than anybody else in my family. So, um, so I just, but I sent it to the husband of the client to say, I'm not saying anything. I have no proof other than there is a genetic connection. I know that. But what do you think about this? And he almost lost his mind. <laughs> really? So are you, think, are you assuming that these could be sisters? No, mother oh, and daughter. Mother and daughter. Well, it's hard to tell because they're both look, they're not, um, the pictures, the ages of the women are not that far apart. They're actually 20 years apart. Uh, really? Yeah. Well, one of them looks great, I guess, or one yeah. of them looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, and also I choose a picture that I think looks the most alike sure. too. So it could be an yeah. old picture of. Yeah. I think it might be an old picture of the mother. Yeah. Um. But anyway, so I, you know, I was getting excited. I was like, okay, I need to obviously I need to research it and get more DNA from people and talk to more people, and I did this for a few hours, and um, then I. Uh, went back to the tree and worked on it a little longer. And I, when I'm doing a quick and dirty tree, I start going down all the matches. And even if they have just one name on the tree, I start to try to figure out how it fits into the tree. And the more people I put on the quick and dirty tree, the more people come up in the DNA matches. And um, one person came up as a like a second or third cousin. And uh, I realized that he is the son of this woman. Oh, wow. Okay. So this looks good. No, this looks bad. Oh, really? He is a second or third cousin to this woman. Oh. oh. He would be a half sibling. I see. So even though I was sure going on location and the look and visuals right. that, I mean, I wasn't sure, but I was almost sure. You felt like you were on the right path. I felt to where I was comfortable enough to share this picture with people. Right. Um, so this is a cautionary tale, everybody. Mm. <laughs> that, and I've never done that before where I jump the gun and actually show, you know, the, the person I'm helping a picture. But it's still someone that they are related to. It is someone they're related it's to. It's just not the Which mother. is how I justify it. Right. <laughs> you didn't show um, them a picture, you know, uh, of some celebrity. <laughs> or, or the king of... of or Bel- Cleopatra. Or the king of Belgium. Yes. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, yeah, I thought it was really interesting. And I'm actually, there are other people in this family. Um, This lady is a niece of a lady who is one of the higher matches of the person I'm helping and um, who's been delightful. This couple is so lovely. I want to adopt them for my own. I want to move in. I'm getting so attached to people whose trees that I'm doing. Or because I'm finding out so much about their family. I found myself the other day going, oh, look, Bobby's gotten so big. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's almost like because you're not just a genealogist, you're like a historian in a way. Because you're building these trees, but you're also getting, hearing people's lives and stories. Uh Yeah, so I get get that. Yeah, it's a a strange uh, conundrum because I feel like I know these people. Another, the Betsy's family, my friend Betsy that I've been working on, um, one of the uncles passed away and they had a memorial for him this last week weekend uh in orange county and i was tempted to go yeah because i felt like i know these people yeah and i i do know some of them but it still would be weird if i showed up at their well i mean it, it'd be, it would unless betsy was going to be there <laughs> in which case you know you'd be there to support betsy oh yeah. yeah well and of course you know i have narrowed betsy's father down to two men Mm. I, I, I told you that a few weeks ago. We still don't know, but I'm still talking. I'm still trying to get pictures of them. Yeah. And I'm still trying to find out who was in the right place at the right time. Haven't you ever gone to a funeral with like of somebody you didn't know, like because you were there for a friend? Well, it, no, it wasn't a funeral. It was a memorial oh, at somebody's oh, house in oh. somebody's backyard. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be the plus one at that. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're very nice people. Right. Um, and they probably would have loved it if I if I'd shown up or would have said, "Yeah, come on." Yeah. But, you know. So that's all. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> so, guys, don't jump the gun. Uh, it, it, people do this all the time on Facebook. They're like, oh, what do you think about the, Do you think these people look alike? And people do it. I do it, too, um, because they want to see what people say. And ultimately, it means nothing. It's a fun game. But you can never, ever, ever count on a picture. And I talk to people, too, that are... That have... I've showed them the picture of the adoptee. Right. And it is supposed to be, like, their niece. They're like... Ugh. She doesn't look anything like her. Well, I mean, <laughs> like, I mean, I've seen families where I, where you go, that kid doesn't look anything like mm-hmm. either of his parents. Yeah, you know, or or you know, it, it may just be that one. Like we talked about this, where somebody has three kids and two of them look like you know they they're definitely a, yeah. an amalgamation of the couple, and then one you know right, <laughs> it's like right. Cra- crazy red hair that the other parents exactly. the parents don't have or something. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, we do a lot of. Um, um, confirmation bias is that what it is? Yeah, it yeah. is for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, we can't do that when we're trying to research DNA. We must rely on the science and not on our own confirmation the bias. The science and the paperwork, all everything combined, right? The end. All right, let's break. Thank you for listening to Cut Off Jeans, the new podcast starring Julie Dixon Jackson. All right, everybody, welcome back. 
I have on the line listener Sarah Needham. Sarah, thank you so much for taking my call today. You're welcome, Julie. I really appreciate um, being on your show with you. Uh, well, thank uh, you for reaching out. I really, uh, I can't wait to hear this, and I can't wait for our listeners to hear it, too. Well, okay. Well, you know, I'm going to start kind of where, you know, most everyone starts is with, Birth. I was born. Yes. Um, <laughs> Um, in upstate New York, mm-hmm. and of course, um, I was adopted, and I was adopted out of uh, St. Mary's Hospital, and um, it a, was a maternity hospital, and at one point early on in the uh, 20th century, it was called St. Mary's Hospital in Infant Asylum, because they always had great names for places like that. Infant um, Asylum. Yes. <laughs> like it, for I, crazy babies. <laughs> exactly. Well, then I was perfect for the right. place. Well, there you go. Absolutely. It's like they knew. Oh, I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I was adopted from um, there. And um, being that I was adopted in New York, of course, I come from one of the states that have the most restricted um, adoption laws, yeah. closed adoptions. You know, I had a fabulous life. So, you know, loved my parents, you know, loved my brother and, you know, my family. And so it was really a wonderful life. My dad was a physician. My mother was a nurse. So it was really very good. But so then we're going to fast forward Mm -hmm. um, to June of 2014. And up to this point, I never really had, I mean, I was curious. I mean, who's not curious? But I never had an overwhelming, like, desire or drive to locate my biological family. Sure. But as I had mentioned to you, um, I had gotten colon cancer in 2014. Okay. And, you know, went through the whole process and obviously, you know, came out on the good end of that. Yay. And then in the spring of 2015, I was talking with um, a good friend of mine about DNA testing, and she was thinking about doing it. And I'm like, you know, this kind of scare kind of like, maybe I should figure this out. Maybe I should do some research and see if I can figure out more of my medical history. Absolutely. So that's really what led me to test. And of course... I tested at Ancestry and 23andMe and Family Tree DNA. So you did the whole gamut. Uh, I did. Okay. I did. And actually, just recently, I did do the uh, new one, um, Living DNA, to kind of see, you know, what that showed me as well. Um, so, um, so that was good. So okay. then, um, kind of while waiting for the results, um, I started doing research because kind of what do you do with your time while you're waiting for results? Right. Um, <laughs> exactly. And I did have, um, because my parents had passed away, and so I had from their safety deposit box um, my order of adoption. Okay. And on this order of adoption, it basically says, in the matter of adoption of Mary, Susan, and then what my family's last name is. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, is that my, really was my name? Or that's a name that the nuns gave me. Right. You you don't really know. Right. So, you know, I started Googling that, and of course I really had no research skills at that time. So I went on and did um, uh, DNA, adoption DNA. Mm -hmm. They're a great resource for people. Um, They have a... um, now in Google and email group and, you know, got in there and started, you know, researching and that. And then of course, you know, the can, I, can I just go back and say, it, sure. are you talking about DNA adoption.com? Yes. Okay. Yes. So listeners, Sorry. that's a, that's a great resource. All, all my yes. adoptees. Okay. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, you know, you know how it is when you get your results, you're kind of like a deer in headlights yep. and you're like, Oh my goodness. I have people who are related to me, and never in your life right. have you ever had people related to mm-hmm. you. Um, so um, one of the th- first things I did was I had, fortunately, I had a couple of very close top matches. I had one that was a first to second cousin match. Okay. Um, and then I had another one 
who was a second to third cousin match. And did they match each other? And they did not. Oh, okay, good. The first, the top one, which was the first to second cousin match, her tree was closed. Yep. So I couldn't see anything on it. On the other one, the second to third cousin match, he had a huge tree. Great. I mean, he currently has like almost 10,000 people on his tree. Wow. And so I emailed both of them just, you know, following, not saying, oh, my God, hello, how are you? Just right. following the kind of the rules and say, well, I think we're cousins. Right. So <laughs> Act casual, say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I think we might be cousins. Uh-huh. So um, <laughs> the second to third cousin, he, like, emailed me right back because he's totally into genealogy. And we started emailing back and forth. And I told him, well, you know, I have this piece of paper that says my name is, you know, Mary Susan and he goes, well, that last name is my grandmother's last name. It was her maiden name. Oh. And I'm, of course, like, oh, my goodness. That's fantastic. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. And I just was, you know, beside myself. So, of yeah. course, he was very welcoming and that kind of thing. So he lets me know who his, you know, grandmother is. And he, you know, sends me all the information and research that he has done. And one of the things I have found doing this is that some people are just so fabulous. They just, like, send you everything they have. Isn't that great? And It is. Yeah. (laughs) It is. I mean, it's saved me years of research, (laughs) to say the least. Yeah. It's a gift. Um, Yeah. It is. It really, truly is. And I'm really very appreciative of it. His grandmother only had 11 brothers and sisters. Oh, that's all. Okay. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> so, again, kind of being a neophyte at this, um, you know, I looked at the charts, you know, the relationship charts, not really understanding centimorgans and, yeah. you know, chromosome browsers and that kind of thing. And I said, well, if he's this, and then I kind of like looked at it and said, well, you know, I'm looking for someone who's like probably like this. Mm-hmm. And I did have, because in New York, as in many states, you can send and ask for your um, non-identifying information. Right. So New York will do that. I mean, it's not particularly forthcoming with a lot of information. Uh Uh-huh. And sometimes it's outright lies, right? Well, sometimes it's, I don't really want to call it lies. Okay. It's just that... (laughs) You know, like with mine, I mean, one part of it was definitely true. The other part about my um, paternal, my father, my biological father, wasn't true, at least to his, for his ethnicity. Okay. So, um, so I got the information back from New York State, and, of course, it told me, you know, things I didn't know about myself. Like, I was born at, four, you know, 1041 in the morning, mm-hmm. you know, um, that, you know, how much I weighed, because... As you know, it's adoption. You don't get that kind of information, and your parents don't usually know. Right. Um, You just kind of like poofed out of thin air. Exactly. The stork dropped me. Right. Yeah. You just kind of, you kind of, uh, yeah, you just kind of uh, materialized. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Um, But what it did tell me was that she was 21 years old. When she had me. Okay. So that gives you, as you know, a range, a date range of people that you're looking for that could be possibly be your maternal person. Sure. But again, I didn't know at this point whether I'm looking for maternal or paternal. Yep. Um, You know, one of the things I did like from it, which I know it was totally true, was the Catholic Charities one said, the infant was very beautiful. (laughs) (laughs) Touche. Well played. (laughs) I'm and I'm sure she was and still is. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> just a little older, but yes. Well, that'd be weird if she wasn't, wouldn't it? <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, so you know, I got the non-identifying, and I've got this. So I'm really, I'm not really using a lot of the tools. I'm just kind of like discovering them yes. a lot for myself. You know, right. looking at you know, census data and, you know, looking at, you know, time frame and looking, you know, so, you, you know, I went through everybody's life, which is what we do mm-hmm. um, when we are researching. And um, 
so, you know, I pretty much um, kind of thought as I'm looking at this that I think I found the family grouping that I belonged in. Okay. Uh, I knew definitely one of the last names mm-hmm. from my, you know, um, paper there, but I didn't know, you know, what the other um, family name was on it. And while I kind of figured out that I was pretty sure this was who it was, I didn't have the matches yet to confirm the other family line. And I didn't want to jump the gun because, as you know, um, from your own experience, just because you think someone may be a parent, they don't turn out to be the parent. Yes, yes. We don't, we don't believe everything we're told. Definitely. Exactly. Um, now, are you talking about just from information that you ascertain from the census um, or what um, exactly you're well, referring to or if you can? Well, um, information that I got from the census. Yeah. And so, I've, you know, as I looked at the 11 brothers and sisters, I looked at people and some the, you know, woman was definitely too old. I mean, you know, she would have okay. been, you know, you know, born in like, 1917. Right. Um, you know, some of it was that um, they had children, you know, my sibling would have been a month older or a month younger than I was. Right. I see. Um, okay. You know, I'm that kind of thing. Okay. And again, so I found family and they had two possibilities. One was a boy and one was a girl. The girl's age matched who the age of what my biological mother would be. Mm -hmm. And the other boy was 18 years old. um, And since I didn't know whether it was maternal or paternal, it certainly could have been him. Sure. So then I started looking for matches, um, trolling through the information I had on the um, other surname. Um, So this would end up being my maternal grandmother's side surnames. Mm -hmm. Um, I had another match um, who had the maternal surname in her name, but it was a hyphenated name. Okay. And she had attached her tree to her husband's family. Oh, dear. Okay. So, um, and again, you know, looking through you know, Facebook, yeah. um, records, that kind of thing, mm-hmm. I figured out that that was my... Um, that was the surname I was looking for. So I had at least matches on each side. Okay. Um, so I'm like, okay. So the cousin who I had first contacted on this side, he had, as we, because we were back and forth, he had actually contacted the person who turned out to be my half sister because she was on Facebook. And he's like, you know, hi, you know, friends, blah, 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 that kind of thing. Yeah. And so she friended him on Facebook, said nothing about me. And so I then contacted her through Facebook and said, you know, did Ancestry, you know, this cousin is a cousin of mine. So we're related and friended her and she friended me. So I'm like, okay, well, this is good. Um, so then I got another two matches on that surname and I said, okay, you know, you kind of, you know, get the gumption up, Sarah, you know, mm-hmm. put together your letter mm-hmm. and, you know, send it off to her. Now, on one hand, I was a little confused on how she related to me. I thought right. she might be my aunt uh-huh. because when I looked at who turned out to be my grandparents, their obits, they listed her as their child. Okay. And then when I looked at the person who turned out to be my bio moms a bit, Mm -hmm. she listed her as her child. Oh, okay. Yeah. So both of them are claiming her as their daughter. Gotcha. Interesting. I've seen that. Yeah. Yes. Is it was this go ahead. (laughs) I'll see if I'm I'll see if my guess is right. (laughs) You know where I'm going. I think I do. (laughs) (laughs) So I um I sent the letter. Um, to her, it was Christmas time. I sent the letter to her and I put pictures of myself at various ages in there. And again, just very, you know, you know, I think we could be cousins or closer, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, here's my phone number. I'll call you after the holidays. Well, she gets it 
and literally she sees it and she dials me, she calls me and leaves a message on my cell phone when I'm at work the day she gets the letter. Uh huh. So I, of course, have, you know, the, you know, voicemail message and I'm like, you, you know, you get very excited and you're like, what, you know, what's she going to say? What's going to go on? And that kind of thing. Yeah. So I get home and I call her back and she answers and I introduce myself and she goes, hi, I'm your sister. Uh- and I'm like, oh, I wasn't really kind of expecting that. And as it turns out, um, our grandparents had adopted her, and so she was legally their child, where our bio mother had given her up for adoption to our grandparents. And so that's why she was listed as... Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Right. All right. Um, so, you know, in the background, what happens is that she gets my letter. She sees the pictures. She calls one of the, our aunts. Mm-hmm. And she's like to this aunt, you've got to tell me, did my mom have another baby? And, of course, this aunt has been keeping this secret for the last 60 years. Mm-hmm. Because once I was adopted, I was never spoken of again. Of course. Ugh. Of course. Uh-huh. Um and she said, yes, she did. Well, thank God. I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? Thank God she, like, had it in her heart to let, let go of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and these people are wonderful people. I mean, That's my great. maternal side have just been absolutely fabulous and warm and welcoming. And, you know, I stay at their houses and I go to the reunions. And it's like I've been part of their family all their lives. Oh, that's fantastic. So it's really been very nice. Wonderful. Now, and, now you're older than your half sister. Um. Well, not that half sister. Um. Oh, the okay. one who I contacted, she's actually older than I am. Oh. She was born in 1953 uh-huh. when our bio mom was 17, 18 years old. Okay. Um. And then and she was raised by your grandparents. My grandparents, yes. Okay. Or my biological grandparents. Gotcha. Yes. And, um, and so was she, was ahead. your mother raised as her sister? Yes. Um, in the and same her household? uncles were raised as her and aunts were raised as her brothers and sisters. Wow. Okay. Wow. And she refers and rightly so, cause they raised her yeah. to people who'd be my bio grandparents as her mom and dad. Yep. Which is lovely. Um, although, uh, albeit very confusing uh, when looking at, uh, like you said, obituaries. <laughs> yes. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> well, exactly. And, you know, as, you know, I've, you know, talked to her over time, when she was born, just like in many families, there were other family members who were interested in adopting her, mm-hmm. but our, my bio grandparents decided that they wanted to keep her and they were going to adopt her. Right. Um, so they did that. Now, when I come along, and of course, I find this information out as I've gone over the years, is that, you know, my bio grandparents were older. They already had a three, four year old running around when I came along. Um, and, you know, they needed to make, you know, a very hard decision. Did yeah. they, you know, focus on raising my half sister? Mm-hmm. Um, or also take me in as well and raise both of us. And, you know, they were older, you know, they would have been definitely older parents. Right. So my mother, bio mother, is in the hospital, St. Mary's Hospital. And as I mentioned to you earlier, my father is a physician and he's a pediatrician. Uh And as it turns out, he was a pediatrician at St. Mary's Hospital at that time. Okay. Okay. And so they, my parents had already adopted my brother, John, mm-hmm. who was actually in St. Mary's Hospital in the nursery at the same time as my older half-sister was. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. I mean, she was born at the end of August, and he was born at the beginning of September. Oh, so they crazy. were there in the nursery together. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, and so my parents you know, the ones who raised me, um, they came in and actually talked with my grandmother and my biological mother and said they wanted to adopt me. Mm -hmm. And I was born with 
um, as it turns out, which is really no big deal. But it's a um, what they what's called a um, ventricular septal defect. Okay. And what that is is that it's a hole in your heart. Oh, okay. Yeah, in really severe cases, if it's a large hole, instead of the you know the blood can go into your lungs and all that kind of stuff. But mm-hmm. mine wasn't that; it was actually a little tiny hole, okay. which closed up by itself. So um, obviously, there was a lot of talking that went on, and my aunt, who of course later I met, told me that my grandmother was very excited and very pleased because a doctor and a nurse wanted to adopt me. And so while it broke her heart, she felt very comfortable that I would be loved and well taken care of. Right. And so they decided to let my parents adopt me. Okay. Did now, so that, so your parents met your biological mother and grandmother then? Yes. Did you know that? Well, you know, it's funny. Um, Hmm. Because, you know, the things that you think about later on in life that you don't think about at the time is that as a kid, I used to go to St. Mary's Hospital with my father on Sunday mornings when he would do rounds. He'd Mm -hmm. leave me with the nurses and the nuns, and he'd go do his rounds. And I remember a couple of them saying, oh, I remember when, you know, your father brought you home and, you know, how exciting and all that kind of thing. And it never occurred to me, really, until my father passed away, that he actually probably knew who my mother was. Yeah. It just... Huh. And so you'd never had a conversation about it. You'd never... No. Wasn't something you really talked about in in your home? No. I mean, I always knew I was adopted. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was... And, you know, my brother was adopted. I mean, it was really, in our family, no big deal. I mean, you're adopted. Okay, fine. You know, know, let's go have dinner. Right. Um, But But um, did you... Were you just not interested in those answers, or did you feel like you couldn't... Uh, it, it wouldn't be something that the family would be comfortable talking about. You know, I, it just, I mean, my brother um, is the same way. He's just not, we just never were particularly, you know, yeah. overly curious about it. Okay. I'm not really even sure why. Yeah. I think, you know, well, it, did you feel, did you feel like uh, you fit into your family? I, I'm always I mean, I curious about this, about with other adoptees, whether or not, I, I think it may be different if they just happen to get that magical combination where they just kind of like fit into a slot and it just makes well, sense that they're there. You yeah, know what I, I mean? mean, I think so because, I mean, I have to tell you, I mean, all my life growing up, my people, my people, mm-hmm. um, people would tell me that I was the spitting image of my father. Oh, isn't that funny? Yeah. Yeah, and of course my response was, "Yeah, I got all the good looks in the family." Right. Because <laughs> um, he was he was a very tall, handsome man, um, very distinguished looking. Right. And um, and he and I, you know, we had, you know, we loved history. We loved reading books. We, you know, we had, you know, we all seemed to have, you know, we kind of fit in. Yeah, it was kind together. of symbiotic. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So I it think, was, it and was, I think that helps absolutely. Okay, so that is the end of the first part wow. of Sarah's interview. I'm excited to hear more. Yeah, she's really interesting, isn't she? Yes. Fun. Another great storyteller. Um, so, Sarah, I guess next week we're, you're going to hear the remainder of this interview, the uh, finale, if you will. And Sarah has a blog, and I actually don't have the address to it right now, so I will put it in the show notes, and uh, also I'll tell you guys about it next week. Corrections Corner. In Corrections (laughs) Corner. That's the end of this episode, Rich. I guess I should tell them about myself. I think you should. (laughs) What do you really want to know? I'm Richard (laughs) Castle, and you can follow me on Twitter, at Castle Songs, or you can go to my website, richardcastle.com. It has nothing to do with DNA or genealogy. It has to do with music and songwriting and piano playing, but um, it's still a nice site to visit. It is. It's fun over there. It is fun. I enjoy (laughs) hanging out with my own website. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> hey guys, I'm Julie Dixon Jackson. On Twitter, I'm at Jules Jackson with two O's. The podcast is at Cut Off Jeans on Twitter. And you can also join the Facebook page, Cut Off Jeans Podcast. Also, you can email me uh, at Jules Jackson at cutoffjeans.com. Guys, 
please keep reaching out. I love it that people are reaching out and asking questions. There's and a lot of really great discussion on that Facebook page. So, so much yes. that I'm, we're going to hit on a little more next week, yeah, too. Fascinating. Um, yeah, fascinating. And, uh, yeah, if you have a story that you think we might be interested in and our listeners would like to hear and you'd like to tell it, please uh, hit me up, and I'd be happy to give you a call. Do you have anything final to say to us, Julie? Oh, yeah, Rich. What is it? The truth is in your genes. <sighs>